Hello everyone. Today we're going to do section A. It's been waiting for a long time. I know some of your students looking for, forward to this uh, video. So we're gonna, today we're going to do section A for our manual truck. Okay? Section A for inspection. All right. Now, for any of the section for the truck for your examinations, you got to make sure if in any part of your inspection, if it's not good, do not say they're good. Make sure you tell the examiner, this is not a good test, uh, I will notify the school, okay? Where this uh, this portion is not good, and it's not working properly, so you wanna notify the school, yeah? Okay, so now we're gonna start from section A. All right, so we're gonna get the top lights. Top lights, all right, top lights. Here, properly mounted, good working condition, not cracked or broken, not missing, amber in color, all right? Headlight, headlight here, and here, properly mounted. Both left and right lights are in good working condition, not cracked or broken, none missing, high beam and low beam, okay? Again, high beam and low beam is on here, okay? All right, next one, indicator light, turn signal, properly mounted, good working condition, not cracked or broken, not missing, amber in color, four-way emergency flasher left and right light working properly so where do you see where is that right. Right. Okay. and then indicator lights and then you got to turn signal with that okay all right now we look under the truck nothing hanging nothing leaking not leaning from side to side leaning from side to side could mean a flat tire or suspension problem what does that mean so you're gonna look here make sure you come down look watch you gotta go down and watch on the bottom yeah you gotta point to the bottom make sure that there's nothing leaking make sure there's no oil no fluid and make sure it's not leaning from side to side if it's not if it's leaning from side to side there will be a shock problem or that's your flat tire yeah so that's why it's leaning from side to side. That's why it's important to check it. Okay? All right. Now, next. Now, so now we're going to start opening up the truck. If, in the case, you've got a picky examiner, okay? If you've got a picky examiner, you want to talk about your grill. Front grill. You want to talk about your bumper, yeah? So you'll make sure you pinch, pinch it, okay? Otherwise, you're good to go, all right? Now, next thing, when we want to open the truck for the, for the hood, you gotta make sure you get, get your foot on here, all right? Get your hand and pull it open, all right? Safety always num comes number one, okay? All right, so now we're gonna come on this side. Engine compartment for the passenger, right? Okay, alternator. Here's the alternator, all right? Alternator, all right? Built, driven, properly mounted, good working condition, not bent, break, or crack, no illegal wheel, missing no boat. Electrical wires running from alternator. Properly mounted, good working condition. No cuts, frays, or burn marks. Away from hot engine parts, properly insulated. All right, electrical wires from it, it's right here. You can see it's coming out from here, from the alternator, yeah? Okay, now next one we're gonna talk about is the fan clutch, fan clutch, which is here, yeah? So you come on this side, that's where you're gonna point. Right, it's inside here, right? Okay, right, where is it? Fan clutch, built driven, properly mounted, good working condition, not bent, break or crack, no illegal well, missing no bolts. Okay, fan blade, properly mounted, good working condition, not cracked, not broken or missing. All right, fan blade, there will be this one, right? Fan blade, All right? Now, fan clutch, as you can see, this is a belt driven, right? Same thing with the um, alternator, right? It's belt driven right here. You see that? That's why it's called belt driven, okay? So make sure we point it out, okay? All right, belt, properly mounted, good working condition. No cuts or frays, no more than three fourth inch of plate. Now, the examiner might ask you, how do you check your uh, belt, right? So you, you must use your hand and feel it, right? So you're gonna feel, feel the tension, right? How much tension it is okay so make sure it's 3 4th inch yeah okay no more than 3 4th inch of play on it all right okay next one hoses 
properly mounted, good working condition. No holes, cuts, bubbles, not leaking any fluids. So hoses, the amazing mainly we're looking at as point to the holes. Now again, there are two type of holes, right? So one type of hose, you will be the water hose, right? So you have it's got water fluid inside. You say it in one way. You do not say uh, the, uh, not leaking any air. It doesn't make sense, right? Because this is a water hose. So if it's water hose, you don't say it's not leaking any air. You got to make sure you say it's not leaking any fluids, right? Make sense? All right, so it's got to make a common sense of what you're pointing at, okay? All right, next one. That's hose. Now, washer fluid reservoir, properly mounted, good working condition, not cracked or broken, not leaking any fluid, not leaking any, uh, not missing any bolts, cap properly secure, check daily to make sure at proper level. So where is that? Your washer fluid reservoir, it's right here, okay? So again, you got to make sure the cap is properly secure, it's got to make sure it's easy to uh, uh, bring it out and as well as tighten it, right? Properly secure. Make sure you check daily. Make sure it's at the proper level for your water fluid, okay? All right, so got to make sure you check on that. Then lastly, on this side, this side here, electrical wires. Properly mounted. Good working condition. No cut, fray, burn marks. Properly insulated away from hot engine compartments. So you're going to put point to these wires here. Yeah, electrical wires. Okay, so what are we doing? So, so far, eight items on this side. Yeah, eight items with that. So, with these eight items, that's on the uh, passenger side that we're going to point out to. Okay, again, as you can see, the electrical wires insulated, properly insulated, right? You got a wire inside, but it's properly secured, insulated inside these wires, and it's away from the hot engine. Okay, so that's what we're done on this side. So now we're going to move on to the driver's side. All right, let's go. Okay, so driver's side here. Now we come down here. Water pump. Okay, so that's the water pump. Okay, water pump. All right, so here. Water pump. Built driven, property mounted, good working condition, not bent break or crack, no illegal well, missing no boat, not leaking any fluid or water, yeah? Okay, now next one. Water pump built, probably mounted, good working condition, no cuts or frays, no more than three fourth inch of clay. So where's that? As you can see, that's the water pump and water pump built, right there. See that? That's the water pump built. And again, water pump is built driven because that's the built driven right there. Okay? All right. So water pump, water pump built. Next one, air compressor, gear driven, properly mounted, good working condition, not bent, break or crack, no illegal will, missing no boat, not leaking any air, not making any funny sound. Attached to the air compressor is the governor. It should be, it should be properly mounted, good working condition, not bent, break or crack, no, legal, not, no illegal will, not leaking any air, not making any funny sound, missing no boat. Now, as you can see, I got an air compressor and, and next to the air compressor is the governor. It's identical wording, okay? But you have to say it separately because here you got an air compressor. When you're doing your air brake, then you will understand what I'm talking about, right? When you're doing an air brake, you said, where is the governor cuts out, right? So governor cuts out the air compressor stop rising, right? So you will be point you're pointing towards inside here in this area, right? When you point to inside here, the examiner might ask you, says, okay, where is it, right? Where is the air compressor located at? So this is what you do. You look at these thick lines here. You see the red line, the thick red line, okay? You follow that line all the way down. That would be where your air compressor is located, right? Makes sense, right? because that's the air tube that goes down there, right? So that's where the location is at. We can't see it, but that's where the location is, okay? And again, air compressor is gear driven, okay? So we gotta make sure we mention that, okay? All right, power steering pump, next one. Gear driven, again, probably mounted, in working condition, no bend, break, or crack, no illegal will, missing no boat, not leaking any fluids, right? Air, a power steering pump, again, it's all the way inside there. We can't see it. Again, 
if the examiner asks you where is it located, where's your power steering pump? Same thing here. Look at it. This is your power steering fluid, right? Reservoir, right? So if you look on the bottom here, you see that? Look at the tube. You see the tube here coming out, right? If you follow this tube, go all the way inside, that will be your power steering pump. And as the way the word is designed it, okay? As the way the word is uh, designed, it says power steering pump. And what does that mean, power steering pump? And what does that do? It's just like your heart, right? Your heart is pumping your blood so that it will go flow, right? In the same way here, your power steering needs to, your, your steering box itself needs fluid, right? You need the fluid to go inside. So you got a fluid going inside, but if there's no pump to allow it to flow, it's not able to flow through. That's why you need the power steering pump inside that is pumping it to allow it to move through here. Make sense? All right, so that's, that's what happened with the power steering pump, okay? All right, next one. All your fill, properly mounted, good working condition. Not bent, break or crack, no illegal well, not leaking any fluid. The cap needs to be properly secured, but also easy on, easy off. This is where I fill up my engine oil. Okay, right here. So that's oil fill right there, all right? You can see that? That's where you fill your oil, right? For the engine, right? Oil fill. And then here's all your dipstick right there, right? All your dipstick, all right, here. So all your dipstick, properly mounted, good working condition. Not bent, break or crack, no illegal well, not leaking any fluid. Cap needs to be properly secured, but also easy on, easy off. I can check if the oil is at the correct level by, number one, remove the oil dipstick and clean it. Two, reinsert the tip uh, stick and pull it out again. Check if the oil level is uh, between minimum and maximum. What does that mean? It means during the exam you don't need to do it manually, okay? But you have, you don't have to take it physically take it out. The examiner might ask you, how do you check your oil level? So what you're gonna do is you're gonna say, I'm gonna pull it out, okay? I'm gonna clean it up. I'm gonna put it back in again and pull it out again and make sure it's between minimum and maximum, all right? So we're making we're making sure that we're looking for that level, yeah? Okay, then you put it back in. Okay, that's how you check it, all right? Now, next one. So that's all your dipstick, yeah? So next one is water cooling reservoir, right? Tank, right? Properly mounted, good working condition. Not cracked or broken. Not leaking any fluid. Not mi uh, missing any bolts. Cap properly secured. Check daily to make sure at proper level. So what are we talking about here? That's the water cooling tank, okay? Water cooling tank, the examiner might ask you the same way. How do you check it? How do you check if it's at the proper level, right? So as you can see, you got minimum and maximum. You see that? That's where the level is, all right? So for our truck, when you come into our yard, when you're practicing, when you before you start your engine, right? And if it won't start, don't keep on trying to gear and trying to turn it. Why? First thing you want to do is open it up, Check, make sure your oil level, your water level is a proper level. If, it's, if you don't have enough water, it's not gonna start the injury, all right? So same thing. So two things you're gonna check. Check your water, check your check your oil level, okay? Both of them, constantly, we check, yeah? Okay, for our trucks, we gotta constantly check it. Because we're on 24 seven pretty much, right? No, about not 10 hours a day. So we're gonna make sure that we are at the proper level, all right? Okay, next. All right, come on over. Next one. Power steering fluid reservoir. Tank, right? Property mounted, good working condition. Not bent, break, or crack. No illegal well, missing no boat. Not leaking any fluid. Cap properly secure. Check daily to make sure at proper level. Again, same thing. As you notice, the term, the words that we use, and pretty much a lot of repeated words, right? So that's, this is where the power steering reservoir, uh, that's where the oil is, right? And since it's liquid, it's in the same words of pretty much the water tank, right? Same wording, because it's all fluid, 
So you want to make sure that it's not leaking any water, fluids, right? Stuff like that. So it's not that hard to memorize them, but you just have to make sure you you say them. Yeah. Okay. Next one. Hoses. Properly mounted, good working condition. No holes, cuts, bubbles, not leaking any fluids. Electrical wires. Properly mounted, good working condition. No cuts, frays, burn marks. Properly insulated, away from hot engine compartment. All right. So electrical wires again. Right here, you look at there, you're gonna to point to the electrical wires, okay? And then you talk about hoses, again, you look for, you can point into this one. All right, this one, what's inside? Is that oil or air? Which one is here? What's inside here? Oil, oil right? Because here's oil, right? Common sense. So don't say <laughs> that this one is not leaking any air. So it doesn't make sense, right? So you gotta make sure you say it proper terms, right? Proper wording so that it makes sense to the examiner, all right? Okay, all right, so these are the 10 items so far, yeah, on this side, okay, that we just went through, all right? Now then, I want you to memorize by S, S, V, W, okay? S, S, V, W, okay? First S is steering, right? By looking at the steering column, right? I mean, the steering wheel, right? When you're looking at the steering wheel, does it come down? Do you think the steering comes down like this, like this, or like this? Which way? Obviously, it will come down like this, right? It comes down like this, then right here. This is your steering column, right there, right? Steering column, all right? Then you got a steering boot, okay? And a steering box, all right? Again, we're continuation, right? Coming down. Steering box, pivot and arm, castle nut and cutter pin, Drag link and steering arm. Okay? All right, steering arm, right there. All right, okay. So these are the words that we're gonna start work, uh, reading. Steering column, properly mounted, good working condition. Not bent, cracked, or broken. No illegal well. Steering boot, properly mounted, good working condition. No cuts, gears, rips. All right, so next one, our next page. Continuation, then steering box. Property mounted, good working condition. No bend, break, or crack. No illegal well, missing no boat, not leaking any fluids. Pitman arm, property mounted, good working condition. No bend, breaks, or cracks. No illegal well, missing no boat. Secure with a castle nut and color pin. Drag link, property mounted, good working condition. No bend, break, no bend, crack, or broken. No illegal well. Steering arm. Property mounted, good working condition. No bend, break, or crack. No illegal well. Secure with a castle nut and color pin. All right? Okay, so that's the first S. What's the first S? Huh? What's the first S? Steering. Okay, steering, right? What's the second S? SS? Suspension. Okay, so suspension for this truck, just imagine this truck if it doesn't have suspension. Right? If it doesn't sus have suspension, what happens when you drive this truck? <laughs> You'll be shaking a lot, right? So that's why trucks has to have suspension to absorb so that when you're riding it, it will be nice and smooth, right? Uh, absorbing it, all right? So for suspension, there are four items that I want you to remember, right? So imagine this as a thin leaf that we're looking for, that thin leaf, right? A thin leaf, just like a leaf of a leaf of a branch, yeah? A thin leaf, right? So that will be your leaf spray. And in the front of it will be a hanger, right? Hanger, leaf spring, U bow and shackle, and then shock. Okay? Four items. Easy, right? Easy to remember, right? Okay, here. So you're looking for that thin leaf, right? Remember? That will be your leaf spring, right? And now on the top of here, that will be a hanger, right? On top of it, that will be a hanger. Hanger, leaf spring, right? And then U bow and shackle right here. U bow look, looks like a U. You see that? Looks like a U, right? U shape all the way there, right? And then shock, right? Pointing right here. Right? That's your shock. Okay? All right. So those are the four items. Easy to remember, right? All right. Okay. So what's the first one? First S? Steering. Steering. Second S? Suspension. Suspension. And then number three, SS? B, B for brake, right? Yeah. All right. Brakes. Now we're going to look for brakes. Now brakes, what we're looking for is a round cylinder. We're looking for a round cylinder, okay? 
that will be a brake chamber, right? So again, that's five items that we want to remember, okay? Five items or brakes, yeah? All right, so you got a round cylinder, you see that? That's your brake chamber, okay? Now, on top of it here, there were brake holes. Brake holes, brake chamber, push rod and slack adjuster. And then you're gonna point inside here for your brake drum and brake that, all right? Okay, here, we're gonna say those words first, all right? Did we do the suspension? No, we haven't, right? Okay, let's do it. Hanger, property mounted, good working condition. No bent, break, or crack, no illegal weld, missing no bolt. Leaf spring, property mounted, good working condition. No bent, break, or crack, no illegal weld, none missing. U bolt and shackle, property mounted, good working condition. No bent, break, or crack, no illegal weld, not missing, not missing any bolts. Shock, property mounted, good working condition. No bent, break, or crack, no illegal well, missing no boat, not leaking any fluid, okay? So that's the, susp the suspension section. Now, again, we just uh, went through the uh, brake section. Now here, brake hose, or the brake lines, right? Probably mounted, good working condition. No cut, bubble, or tear, not leaking any air, not making any funny sound, properly insulated. Brake chamber, properly mounted, good working condition. Not bent, break, or crack, no illegal well, missing no bolt, no uh, no loose or missing clamps, okay? Push rod and slack adjuster, property mounted, good working condition, not bent, break or crack, no illegal well, missing no bolt, no more than one inch of plate, very important to say, okay? No more than one inch of plate. Brake drum, property mounted, good working condition, not bent, break or crack, no illegal well, no residue buildup, minimum of half inch of life. Brake pad, probably mounted, good working condition. Not bent, break or crack, no illegal well, no residue buildup, minimum of quarter inch of life. Okay, all right, so with that five items here, the examiner might ask you, which one is push rod and which one is slack adjuster? Which one is push rod and which one is slack adjuster? So what the push rod would be this one. You see this line here, right? So what happened is it goes in and out, yeah. okay? And this one is the slack adjuster right here, right? So that would be the push rod right here, right? So that pushing and out. And you, this is where you adjust it, adjust your, uh, your thickness of your uh, amount, right? So again, so here, how much? What is the uh, uh, minimum thickness mm -hmm. on here? What is the range here for your push rod and slack adjuster? No more than one inch of plate, right? So that's where you adjust it, right? One inch of plate. Now, with the brake drum, what's it? What is the thickness? Minimum thickness? Half inch, right? And brake drum? I mean, a brake pad? Forty inch, right? So now, which one is the brake drum? You see the back there? in the back you see those cylinders those are the brake drum okay and inside of it that's where the brake pads holds it that's how it holds the uh, holds the uh, tire in place right stops the truck right all right okay so that's that part now lastly tire right tire section ICD inflation condition depth I it should be inflated to manufacturer specification the, the specification is written on the tire, right? It was saying on the tire right here, right? So you make sure you look for it, and then that's what it was tell you right here. You see that? All the wording, right? It was saying right there. It will tell you the manufacturer stock will tell you how much uh, the thickness it is, right? C for condition. Must be original. No recap or rethreads. No cuts, rips, bubbles larger than an inch. D for depth. Minimum red, uh, depth of 430 seconds. Of inch okay all right rims probably mounted good working condition no bent crack or broken no illegal well air valve probably mounted good working condition not bent break or crack no illegal well not leaking any air not making any funny sounds lug nuts probably mounted good working condition not bent break or crack no illegal well all present no rust or shiny threads those are indication of looseness. Hub seal, probably mounted, good working condition. Not cracked, not broken, 
or leaking any fluids. Okay, so you got the tire, rims, air valves that we're looking down here. You see that right there? Air valves. And then lug nuts, right? We're looking at the lug nuts. And then hub seal, right? Hub seal, right there. All right, so that's your tire. Now, for the tire itself, it says it must not cut no more than an inch, right? No cuts or bubble larger than an inch. And also it says that it, mu it must be original, cannot be re thread or recap for the front tires. However, for the back tires, you're allowed to have re thread and recap. Why? Why is that? Why is the back tire you're allowed to have re thread and recap? Why is the front tire it has to be original? But what does that original mean? Original means directly manufactured from, directly made from the manufacturer. So it cannot be like the old days, the shoemakers, right? They take it out, put a new layer on, right? Then that's remanufactured, right? So that's not original. So original means right, originally made directly from the manufacturer, right? But why is the front tire must be original and cannot be repaired or recapped? Why is the back tire be allowed to have repaired or recapped? Why? Yeah, this, yeah, back is important just as well, right? Reason? Okay, what else? Okay, you see? Look at here. The back has two tires. Okay, front has only one tire. So if any of the tire goes out, you got another tire that holds it. Please get you pull over to the side, stop, change your tire, and you're on the road again, right? But front tire goes out, you're done, right? So that's why the front tire needs to be 430 seconds. The back, minimum thread of 230 seconds. So it's different, okay? Minimum thickness is different, okay? All right, with that said, now the examiner might ask you, how do I check the air, uh, air, the tire? How do I check it? With the air stem belt, right here. Right. We'll talk about that, right? We're gonna check with the pressure, air pressure gauge. gauge. Right. Air gauge, yeah? Air gauge, that's how we check it. Then what about here? How do I check the, uh, the depth of this? With the depth gauge, right? <laughs> Common sense, yeah? With the depth gauge, okay? So. You can go to uh, Walmart or any place and buy them, and then you can just show them. Yeah, that's how I check them. Okay, you can use them for the future too, but uh, always have them. Yeah. Okay, that will be your section A, and uh, we're done for today. Thank you.